Hello everybody, Michael the Librarian of Magic here, finding and cataloging the magical and pointing you to it. Today is October the 1st once again, and I've got another series of uh, Villain a Day drawings for you. Uh, this is my third year in a row doing this, and uh, I've got a whole other month of fun treats, fun uh, villains every day planned. So I'm going to go straight into that, but check back every day for a uh, new villain each day for the entire month of October. I hope you enjoy this series. I hope you enjoy seeing the drawings I've come up with, as well as uh, learning a few things about the, um, the villains themselves. So without further ado, the first villain of the month is this guy right here. Ercole Visconti, from the movie Luca. Uh, Luca came out earlier this summer, um, this year, and I quite enjoyed it. It's the newest Pixar film. Um, it uh, was directed by Enrico Cosarosa, and there were a whole team of animators that worked on developing all of these characters, over 63 different people worked on the character uh, designs of the film, including for Ercole here. Um, and I found out uh, some interesting stuff that I was learning about, you know, the stylistics of the movie as well as the character. Um, Ercole is uh, quote-unquote 16 years old, uh, but really he's older. That's kind of the one of the gags of the movie. He's a five-time... Uh, running repeat champ of this race they have in their town called the Porto Rosso Cup. And it's kind of like a triathlon, I guess you could say. There's bike riding and swimming and uh, pasta eating. And, um, you know, if you do the math very easily, you, you can deduce that he is too old to continue in the race because you, I think once you're 16, that's the oldest you can be. So technically he's like 17 or 18, but he keeps lying about his age. Uh, because this is like the glory of his life, he has this Vespa, um, as you can see in the drawing, that he's so super proud of. Um, and that's from, you know, like winning the race a bunch of times. He's gotten these accolades. He thinks everybody in the town really loves him, but in fact, they don't at all. Uh, even the local priest kind of doesn't really care for him that much. Um, and he's got these uh, kind of cronies that follow him around, Chicho and Guido. And they, they're all basically just a group of bullies that pick on all the kids in the town. Um, and the plot of the movie is that these other kids are basically trying to um, beat him in this race so that they can take him down a peg because he's just a creep. Um, he is narcissistic. He thinks, like I said, everybody loves him when in fact they don't. Um, he's kind of a little bit like Gaston in that respect, that he sort of thinks that everybody in the town's in love with him, but they're kind of not. Although in the case of Gaston, some of the people in the town really are in love with him, like some of those girls and, um, you know, LeFou. Some of the pe people really respect him, pe the people at the, um, the tavern and stuff. Um, I read somewhere that they're similar, except that Gaston... Um, is motivated by lust and uh, Ercole is motivated by greed. And I guess that's true, but in the end, what both of them really want is is power and attention. Um, so they're kind of the same more in that way. Because um, arguably, Gaston says that he wants to be with Belle, but really it's because he's trying to feed his own ego. Not It doesn't seem that he's that, that lusty after Belle more than he believes that he has a right to her because she is, in his estimation, the best girl in town and he wants to be seen with her. He doesn't want to settle for anybody else. Even though this isn't a, a video about Gaston or anyway, but um, I guess they're similar. They just want to be powerful. They want to have attention. Um, Ercole is like that. Uh, he was voiced by um, Severo Raimondo. I hope I said that correctly. Um, this was pretty much his first major film voicing role. He's a comedian and a satirist uh, in Italy. He's an Italian entertainer. Um, and uh, he does a lot of kind of political satire stuff in Italy. He does have a Netflix comedy special called Il Satiro Parlante, which you could watch if you're interested in more of his work. But he does a great job voicing this character. Um, he's just a real slime ball. 
Um, as far as the style goes, as far as the style of the movie and the, the style of the, the animation of the character, um, there's a lot of different influences that went into the making of the film Luca. Um, the director was from Italy and was trying to evoke some of his childhood experiences in the seaside towns in Genoa, and that's kind of how the environment got its uh, style. Um, and in terms of the characterizations, they really wanted, they were obviously influenced by um, Ardman uh, and some of the Wes Anderson stop, stop animation movies like um, uh, The Fantastic Mr. Fox and so on, Isle of Dogs, etc. Um, the Ardman movies, the character designs, the character models in this are very much look like Ardman characters. If you aren't familiar with Ardman, it's a British uh, stop motion animation um studio that's made movies like uh, Shaun the Sheep and all of the Wallace and Gromit uh, flicks. Um, if you haven't seen any of those, I highly recommend them. They're very good and very fun and entertaining. Uh, particularly, uh, I enjoy uh, Wallace and Gromit and the Curse of the Were-Rabbit. I would definitely recommend that. Uh, but So that's a very obvious visual cue for this film. And then tone-wise... Um, there's also a lot of influence from uh, Fellini, the director Fellini, um, and Hayao Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli. Um, the Ghibli influence is very clear in the sort of heart of this, you know, the heart that this movie brings, and Fellini as well. Um, the, the movies that came to mind for me that are sort of reminiscent of Miyazaki were a little bit of elements of uh, My Neighbor Totoro and most certainly Ponyo. Um, if you haven't seen any of those movies, uh, I recommend uh, digging into Studio Ghibli um, for some animation stuff. But you, there's definitely some hints of being influenced by uh, Hayao Miyazaki here. Um, and so that kind of is all of that sort of came together in a stew and you ended up with Luca. And, I, and it's a very enjoyable movie. Is it perfect? I don't think so. But it's very high uh, and a high tier of Pixar films for me. I, I rather enjoyed it. Uh, it. It just it hit me just right. The message of it hit me right. Um, and I, I found it to be very enjoying uh, enjoyable. So um, and and Ercole is kind of one of the reasons I like a good narcissistic villain. I like a uh you know, a heel that you can sort of root against and that kind of thing. And he does the trick with his little wispy mustache and his uh, sweater tied around his neck, um, etc. So my, um, my villain of the day uh, for the 1st of October is Ercole Visconti. Uh, one other interesting factoid that I found is uh, the family Visconti um, is a, the actual name of a... Um, older uh, Italian family with some uh, uh, lineage and uh, their um, family crest is very interesting because it does actually uh, feature a person being eaten by a sea monster which is sort of an interesting tie-in to the plot of this movie that involves sea monsters and people being afraid of them and the fact that this uh, and, and Ercole is no different um, so it's very interesting to see the uh, family crest there and um how that's sort of reflected in uh, the plot of the film. So that was kind of another cool tidbit there. Anyway, I really hope you enjoyed this drawing. Uh, it gets a month off uh, started and uh, come back for more of these. I hope that you come along with me and check them out and that you're enjoying these and hope it enhances your, your October season, your um, Halloween villain times. Thanks for watching these and I will see you tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye-bye.